For those who don't know, I think probably most people know me, I'm Peter Jeffrey, I'm the chair of my team, I'm the chair of the December. When I last spoke to um, the network groups, the chief executive chairs and uh, strategic leaders, it was in the autumn when I had been sort of elected but hadn't taken posts. I've now been in post six, seven months. And I said then that I was very keen, if invited by the same steering group, that actually we would have, a, at some point in a, this sort of meeting, a chance to ask questions, comments, be open with each other about what you wanted why to England to be doing, what you want to talk to be doing in the movement, anything like that. And we will later on give you a chance to question and ask and make comments. Anything goes, really. Anything you want. I don't necessarily say I'm going to agree with what you we say, but we need to have an atmosphere where we can talk and be open with each other. Um, I'm going to say a few words first, then I'm going to talk about the appointment process of Denise. Denise is then going to talk about herself and some of her aspirations, and then we um, yeah, then we'll get into questions. I've actually changed something. I was going to, just before I get into what I sort of was going to say, um, I was actually just going to throw one or two ideas out based off the large, some of the presentations this morning on the social uh, investment market. Uh, some of you know I have a banking background, I was a partner in PricewaterhouseCoopers and a banking specialist and played a role in the government's rescue of another bank, so I'm quite interested in this. And just particularly here listening to Jonathan, uh, I think there's some things we need to do quite to respond to that. Um, actually, we might want to think about lending between ourselves and actually having some sort of structure in place to, to, to make that happen and the right expertise and the right sort of um, protection against, against losses. That's something we perhaps should think about. Um, we might want to actually set ourselves up centrally as a third party intermediary to interact between the big lottery fund and the YMCA movement. Might be a good thing to do. And in fact, Jonathan said that he would be more than happy to provide the infrastructure for that as a sort of white label type thing. Um, and, and we can perhaps manage it together, and that might be a good idea. Uh, I actually thought, you know, some of these should talk about bond issuance, probably for a lot of you, was, was, was probably something that would be a frightening, difficult but actually, could the YMCA movement do a bond issue? Could we do something with a package of, of things that might be worth doing? And I think there's much more for the role of YMCA England to do in one of the agencies of the people you've heard about, which we you know, frankly do not want 100 or 100 odd YMCA's knocking on their door, but actually keep getting the contacts and being able to open doors to individual associations and to some of the other networks that are. Uh, some of you will have heard of the Cinnamon Network, which is quite an active um, Christian social enterprise network um, called Cinnamon because they first met in the Cinnamon uh, Club in London. But that has a number of Dragon's Den type um, thing, uh, things that run off the opera. Off the back of it, I'm actually a trustee of one of them. That's where they uh, we bring together businessmen from the city and other you know, London and other places together and we allow um, smaller social enterprise charities to pitch for what they would do with a certain amount of money and sort of often raise, usually raise that we've raised um, certainly the one I'm involved in which has been going five years has raised over five million pounds for, in those five years from people in donations and actually a lot of the wine, a lot of the wine would be would fall into the category that could pitch for that. Now we need to make that better known, we need to get that done, and in fact uh, it may be that we actually run one specifically for YMCA's. So there's a number of ideas which I'm quite, I'm quite, yeah, Denise will tell you, I'm quite good at ideas, then I'm past the moment. Anyway, and if any of you have got any other ideas on what we should do based off what we've heard um, this morning, Please come and let me know or shout or say so later. Anyway, 
What have I been doing um, since uh, you last heard me? Uh, well, I suppose I've been trying to get around and visit as many of you as possible. We've had a number of regional visits. Um, it hasn't quite hit the north yet, I'm very aware of that. But I have got to the north of Burma. Um, but I, and that, they've been great, and we've met, uh, I've met, um, I think it's 40 or so chairs, <coughs> 40 or so chairs, so it's not a bad thing. Um, and we've had lunches and dinners and talked a bit about that, and I'm going to continue that. In fact, Denise and I have been talking about a different way of engaging, perhaps, with you, whereby she and I would both... You know, we would aim to do that on a sort of six monthly basis. So, one six months you might be Denise, one six months you might be me, and just as a way of getting everyone together. Um, and we are, and I'm still, and I'm fact we re-energise this, keen for the national board to actually visit. I did challenge them to visit all YMCA's in the course of the year. We might be a bit tight, but we're going we're, we're going to have a pretty good go. And I have a map. I bring to each board meeting with every YMCA on in red, and when we visited it, it goes green. So, um, yeah, and uh, so that's important because I do want us to have a much more open culture of communicating and getting round and, and hearing what is going on. My intro in the last six months, um, what's been there? Well, number one was the appointment of chief executive, permanent chief executive. We have a chief executive, I can tell you about that in a minute, so I can tick that off. A very key part of that is actually what the rest of this afternoon is going to be about, which is trying to help in the, the, the brand project and the uh, movement strategy and the government project and uh, facilitate some of that going forward. Um, I've been very keen to try and change some of the culture we had. Some people Heard people last said that I wanted us to try and begin to trust each other again. Because there seemed to be to be a lack of trust. And, and, and in all places that we're in, we're, 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 you know, we're in this because we're all passionate about serving people who need us. And we need to learn to trust each other. And some of those cultural changes need to have had to be need to be in place in what I would say England. Um, <coughs> Some of the correspondence that have come from one day England has been perhaps not as helpful as it could and it's taken a bit longer. But equally, some of the correspondence that has come from the movement is equally pretty unpleasant. And yeah. frankly, both of those are not acceptable. And I and Denise will challenge all of that um, together. Um, there are a number of legacy issues, and I guess I took it upon myself to try and get to grips with a number of legacy issues to enable a incoming chief executive to perhaps look to the future. Um, there are uh, a number of legal claims that ones that even have from you, um, and there are some other issues coming out of uh, Andy Farrell's previous development uh, work, in fact his criminal behaviour. Um, we, uh, to say, we are trying to get the grips with that, um, and clearly some of this I have to be careful what I say. Uh, but, um, just to say, we have settled one claim, uh, very much uh, in the spirit of us sitting down while the wives able to do the local wives aid concerned, I think we were both happy uh, when we got to, uh, and that, that was a reasonable deal done for both parties. We certainly need to do that in another case. I'm uh, keen to get that out of the, the way, but I'm pleased we've made some progress with some other issues um, which you're, uh, we need to deal with. You will hear about Thames Gateway being in difficulties. Um, they have suffered the same problems with respect to Farrell's behaviour. They took the view not to sue us. Um, obviously, um, so they are, and they are in difficulties. Uh, as a result of that, and some other things, so clearly this is difficult for Denise. Um, we were aware of this when we appointed Denise, and one or two of you asked me, you know, given where Thames Gateway is, 
Yeah. Did you know that? It was, was important. Yes, we did. Um, uh, and feel that they, you know, we were we were largely responsible for the position they got into. You will, I hope, shortly hear some how that is going to be dealt with um, and the future of the work that Thames Gateway uh, was doing. If any of you do want to talk to me about the needs of the position, can you do so? I really don't want people whispering and talking about her situation around there. Um, I, we've had some due diligence that they've done in terms of going away. The people did it, I positively asked the other day, you know, is there anything you found that I should know about? And they said, no, you know, there's nothing. There was a whole series of circumstances that are unfortunate, and actually why I'm saying that we the cause of a large part of that. So, um, yeah, if you do want to talk about it, perhaps come and talk to me outside of that. Um, and I've been asked about uh, the Abbey uh, situation. Once we've settled our claims, we are, the board has decided we will revisit the police um, what action should be taken. So, certainly, what I have done, well, certainly what I have seen, I, I cannot understand. You know, a prosecution, I would have thought, would have been relatively straightforward. Um, and we will be revisiting with his professional association uh, his behaviour as well. Peter, why don't you take a civil prosecution? Uh, yeah. We have looked at that. We, we're not too well. It would be, have to be a cost benefit. Um, so whether he's got enough assets for it to make it worth it. But I wouldn't rule, you know, the board has not ruled that, that out. Okay. But it, ha you know, it, it has cost the movement, whether it's us all, then many millions of pounds. Um, so. It's a very sad occasion, but I'm hoping to get it out of the way because the longer this goes on, it's not helpful for any of us. Other legacy issues that I am trying to deal with, we've just begun the early stages of revisiting the pension deficit, and we're getting a little team to look as to whether there are any creative ways to freeze what that number is and handle it so that we don't have a lot of the vagaries of investment ups and downs and all sorts of the other things that go to that. And I would hope in the next year to perhaps be able to come and have a sensible discussion with the movement. Is that what the movement wants? We're equally set in train a process of just looking how we deal with the property maintenance overhand. We have a very large number and to what that's going to be. But we will have to see. So that's some of the things I've been doing with us, but I can talk if you want to ask me about that. In terms of the CEO recruitment, I think I sent a note out to the movement. Uh, it was an interesting process, a very interesting process. Uh, we did appoint a firm of search consultants. They got either applications or were pointed in the direction of about 60 people who were interested in the role of many different types and abilities and skills and experience. That, but they were shortlisted down to 19 uh, people who we thought could almost certainly walk into the job and be appointed. Um, we interviewed seven of those 19 as a first set of interviews uh, for an hour um, with four members. And then we asked three to come back for a second uh, perhaps not an interview, a second sentence, we need to tell you a different day. When, when, when we did do a second interview, we also had a small team of chairs and chief executives from the movement. They had a, they had a presentation uh, from them. And then we also had, they had a chance to meet the senior management team. Um, and we decided um, unanimously as a selection committee after uh, reflecting on it, that for the time we are in, Denise was by far and away the best candidate. <coughs> and I'm delighted uh, with that. Um, we were very clear that Denise had grown through the process and uh, we'd enjoyed all the interviews that we had and we thought the, uh, uh, and I think my point of view, the chemistry between Denise and I was also something that was important and I think we both feel that works. Uh, well, I'd say at least there were, and certainly there were in that grouping, some very impressive and high-profile people. Uh, 
it, very much so. And Denise did incredibly well to uh, come through that. Um, and actually, I guess also I'm pleased in the, the feedback from the other candidates, and some of them are very high profile uh, and uh, heads of other very major charities, was that they were they'd all all the feedback I've had, and I guess you might say I might hear this, but it hasn't been the case elsewhere, but the research consultant said it was unusual that all those people said they had had their view of the YMCA movement enhanced uh, by the process and would like to, many of them would like another, a different relationship with us. So actually it's achieved more than just the chief executive. <laughs> done some real good in terms of, of the movement. Um, I will let Denise speak here in a minute or two. Just to say, I guess we are content with the really key actions that both of us will be involved in things like this. Um, you'll see one of us at some times or the other, or both of us at things. We see this very, very much as a partnership in terms of leading uh, the movement on. And with those thoughts, perhaps Denise, do you want to? Yeah. Shut down your laptop lid, is that okay? Thank you. Well, if you use the mics just in case, I don't know, I talk as loudly as Peter, I've just got lots of things in common. Um, but maybe I can start by giving a, a different side to the interview process. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that actually the process over two months was five interviews, um, personality profiling, psychometric testing and aptitude tests. So at the end of it, I actually thought David Cameron had lost his job and thought that I was going to be uh, the next Prime Minister. I mean, it was a, a really, really robust process. But I echo what other people said. It was a great experience. Um, I might share with you now the time I got the job, where Peter actually made the phone call. Um, I was running um, a session uh, on a leadership day for the Youth Sports Trust. And I was there with Deborah Potts and uh, Richard James from South West London um, in the basement of Central YMCA, where, as many people who've been to Central will know, your phone doesn't work. <laughs> So not only was my phone not working, my, it had knocked out the radio signal completely. So uh, around, after we'd completed the session with the Youth Sports Trust, I thought, do I go back to the office or shall I go home? It was a really nice sunny day. I hadn't heard anything, not from the headhunters, not from Peter, and I'd resigned myself to the fact that I hadn't got the job. So I went home and uh, thought, I'm just going to go home, have a little think about it. Um, anyway, I suddenly realised that I promised that I'd call Chris Hand. I hadn't done that, and I knew if I hadn't at least left him a phone call message to say I tried to, he'd give me a lot of ribbing. <laughs> so I thought, I won't call his mobile, because he'll probably think he needs to answer it, or maybe he won't. But um, I'll leave a message on his office phone. Anyway, kept trying, kept saying unobtainable. So I thought, well, I will try his mobile then. So tried his mobile, that was unobtainable too, which is when I realised my phone radio signal had been knocked out. So at 6.30, on the day I thought I hadn't got the job, um, I rebooted my phone to many messages from Peter, <laughs> many messages from Rupert the headhunter, um, text messages, and uh, I thought, what does this mean? As I thought that, um, Peter called me again. So uh, told me that they were going to offer me the role and I promptly had to say, can I take five minutes? Um, because I completely convinced myself I hadn't got it. So it was a, a, a great experience. Um, being offered the job wasn't quite the ecstatic moment I anticipated, but I am very pleased to be here. So um, I think the future looks great. I know I've been asked to tell you a bit about me and I do know lots of people in the room because as Civil Society magazine have now labelled me, I'm a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> Not good with that label. But, um, you know, maybe I, I'll just act as if I don't know anyone in the room, because I think that would be easier. So maybe I can tell you a bit about me personally. So I live in the London Borough of Bromley with my husband David and my two children, two girls, Cara and Mia, who are 14 and 11. I um, 
I go to St Andrew's Church in Orpington. Um, it's um, a high church of England. I've been there for about the past decade. Was actually raised a Roman Catholic, so feared God for many years. <laughs> um, and sort of just moved away a little bit. Um, very involved in the local community in lots of ways with the local school. So uh, my passion is people. So I think people realising their potential, people having their needs met, people being happy. So I do tend to get involved wherever I have a relationship. Um, equally, I'm driven by achievement, so I'm very active. I'm always doing something, uh, but I like it that way. That does mean sometimes I make myself too busy, um, but I do often end up with people around me who help me by saying, I think you're a bit too busy. So, but, so personally, you know, a great family life where my husband is very supportive. He's what's called a fine art engraver, so we do very different things. Um, so we're able to support each other. Our work patterns can be different, which is great. I will say today we did clash. He had an appointment, and so did I. He's meeting the Queen. <laughs> but I said, mine's more important. <laughs> so I'm here with you, and luckily enough, I have a wonderful mother-in-law, so he is still meeting the Queen. Um, I thought maybe it'd also be good for me to tell you a bit about my professional background, because I have been around <clears throat> as a veteran uh, for quite a long time, but um, I went to school, a bit like Steve Chalk really, went to school, stayed on to sixth form college, because at that time my parents, my dad was a social worker, my mum didn't work, um, they couldn't afford, they had three children, couldn't afford to send us to university, it wasn't in our psyche. But I did stay on at Sixth Form College and did a diploma in business. When I left there, I went into the private sector for about four years, worked for a private sector company in communications, um, became the head of that department, which sounds really grand, but I only had five staff. Um, but it was great, I was only 22. Um, I then did a favour for a friend um, and went to um, do some work at City Wines here on a Sunday afternoon. Um, on their reception in their housing and it was it was something that I hadn't anticipated to do very long it was someone said can you help us out so I did um, and I've never left so after a few weeks a job came up um, at one of the regional offices the metropolitan region so I took that on um, well I applied and in fact I think that was a really difficult week. I think it was three hours for an admin job or something <laughs> um, but I worked for the Metropolitan Regional Office I then went to work for Croydon YMCA <coughs> that is now South London YMCA I then went to work for Ealing YMCA which is now West London YMCA then I went to work for Dartford YMCA which is now Thames Gateway YMCA <laughs> <laughs> I might even do something else soon so um, so there is a bit of a trend here in that I, I do like to develop. I think progress is important for us as, a, as individuals, as humans. Um, I don't think we should stand still. Um, so when I do take on a role, I do tend to want to see progress. So maybe I can, oh, I also, my professional background eventually was uh, in human resources and training and development. And I hope no one else is going to feel disrespected by this, but it just didn't stretch me. Um, and I found it too narrow uh, to stay within one field, but that is my professional qualification that I've got. Um, so maybe I can tell you a bit now, maybe, about my leadership style. I've done lots of coaching over the last decade, particularly in relation to leadership, understanding myself in relation to leadership, and how I can support others um, in their leadership. Equally, a big part of my professional development has been spent looking at emotional intelligence. It's something I feel very passionately about. I think that if we can understand the reason why we behave like we do sometimes, if we can understand the reasons other people are, and take time to think about that, I think we can just have a, a greater working environment. Um, we can have better lives because we don't react and put barriers up to progress. So the emotional intelligence coaching that I've received, um, I think has put me in good stead for some of the things that we are saying needs to change for us as a YMCA. My leadership style, which I'm sure um, there are a lot of others with the same leadership style in the room, which is a good thing, um, is called transformational leadership. So I've done a lot of work around this. I'm able to express it very clearly. 
I can see lots of people with the same thing in the room, but if you, you haven't actually gone through a process to find out what the skills are that you bring, I'd really recommend you do it. I know that what I do is strive to make sure that we have a very clear vision, and I know we have a vision for the movement um, in relation to our work, but a vision for ourselves, what do we want to do? Um, and setting some goals to try and achieve that. I also am very good at ensuring that we have a really simple common language where we can talk to each other um, and we can inspire people further down our organisations to engage in that vision. Equally, I challenge assumptions, so I do drive people nuts sometimes because I don't just accept this is what we're doing. I do think progress is important, so I will challenge what we're doing to say, are we doing it right? Sometimes the answer will be yes, and sometimes the answer will be no. Um, but ab above all, I think what's quite important around this type of leadership is you can only do it with integrity, because actually it's about people buying in. It's not about telling people what to do, but people wanting to come with you. And I think that's where the mindset of servant leadership comes in, and that's about looking after the individuals as well. And that's where the emotional intelligence aspect I hope of the skills that I bring will help us make sure that if we have happy people, um, we're going to achieve great things. So that's my leadership style, transformational with a servant leadership approach. Um, and I hope that that, that will cascade. Absolutely, I feel that coming through the senior management team at YMCA England. So I hope that sort of leadership um, style tends to cascade down. So that's a bit about me. Um, if people have got any questions, Peter and I are going to take some questions shortly. But perhaps I could um, start to tell you a bit about the way forward before we move on. We was going to do this after the questions, but I think it's important for now. I could come to you now with a vision for what I think we should be doing over the next 10 years or even two years. Um, but actually, we're already on that journey. So I don't think that's what I need to do now. We have got three presentations coming up for you that I'm really excited about. We have um, a new agency that were appointed to help us through the branding process that had stalled. I'm going to use the word stalled a lot. So, um, but we did stop our branding process for whatever reason. Appointed some new consultant, and I cannot tell you how excited I am about what they're going to present to you today. Equally, we are developing a movement strategy. We have a great group of people um, from the movement, uh, as a group, chaired by Dave Ball, um, that are identifying what you are saying are the priorities for the movement to achieve so that we can see progress. We at YMCA England are absolutely committed to aligning our strategy so we can deliver on that for you. So one of the things that's very important for me is that what we do is high quality. And I think if we've got real clarity around what you want us to do, so we can set those expectations. So not everybody's expectations is trying to be met, but as a collective, we know what your expectations are. I think we can do a great job. So what I'd like to finish on, so please be excited about the next three presentations because they are the way forward. Um, what I will say is some of it is still in draft, um, so it is around consultation, so they might not be complete, but please, please engage in a really positive way in trying to help us get that real clarity we need about how we're going to go forward. So just to finish, because otherwise we won't have time for any questions, I just want to remind people that I am one of you, um, and so are the staff at YMCA England. We are one, and together we can do some really great things. So, yeah, let's do it.
in the um, farming world thing to do that. I should warn you from the wife's age and staff, I've learned a few new things recently. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to stand up, Sally, for the girls question. All right, okay. Um, they, they went down to Fairthorne as a staff team um, last week, or week before week? Last, last week. Um, I gather there was quite a lot of cheating. Yes. <laughs> Were there, yes, which needed to be dealt with. So um, <laughs> just be careful. Yeah. Uh, Could you clarify cheating? <laughs> <laughs> we did teamwork. So okay, we had that's an fine, that's amazing fine. day. 89 of us went to Fairthorne. Wow. Uh, Chris very kindly invited yes. us down to see local work. The staff at Wives Anchor were inspired by what they saw, so we had um, three press conferences in the morning about the work at Fairthorne. We then did a little bit of our own stuff and shared some of the brand stuff that um, we're going to share with you now with the team there, which they were very excited about. And then Chris had organised, and his team had organised some, te some team games, some activities. So we did a number of different challenges, and if you completed the challenge, you got a balloon. <laughs> anyway, um, I led a team um, that was <laughs>
Equally, we will be having a movement strategy that we need to incorporate within our own strategy and our structure will reflect this with you, is what I'd say. So I, I have no agenda to come in and just restructure. I think that's an outcome of a, a strategic move to put an organisation in a particular direction. But we will be structured to deliver on our strategy, which will be the structure. Is that okay? Yeah, it's really good. Is that enough? So, uh, just to put it in, it's good. That's specifically about housing and improvements. Housing, I'll pick up there. Just, you know, for instance, I do know that there has been, you know, with some of the um, relationship aspect of how we work with YMCA's, I know that's been raised by YMCA's and by the people trying to do the job, but that's not working. I'm just giving you an example. So, absolutely, we are looking at how we can make that work. So, that might be changed. Um, you want to do housing? Yeah, yes, so sharing. sharing. <laughs> As I think I tried to say, there is a project to, to look at how some of the uh, maintenance issues of housing, that involving the movement and everything else, is looking at how we play where housing is placed. Um, uh, the, we don't know what the outcome of that will be, but all is up for to play for. Um, I think Denise and I probably might have a preference to move some of it back to local YMCA's and certainly we have done in the last six months where there is a good a good uh, reason for why for YMCA England and the local YMCA to do that. So for instance there's a local YMCA uh, that's got money to develop a property. We have got money to develop it and it actually makes a great deal of sense to let them buy it or take it off us. And we will do things like that. But it is all up to play, play for as part of that, that review. And the review was uh, undertaken for housing will be complete. And we had hoped it would be complete by September, but I'm looking at it. I work very openly, so I'll tell you everything. Maybe not everything, and you are both. But we, when we looked at it, we found out that actually what we needed to do was um, the some of the work around cost in relation to liabilities for that housing was too old, four or five years. So we are a little bit delayed in that we've had to have that refreshed. That's happening at the moment. So we anticipate um, a report going to the National Board at its, uh, it'll be its November meeting, if they agree that on Saturday. At the moment they're asking for it for, for September. Um, and it might just be a bit after that. But once we have that report, um, once that's been presented to the National Board and they agree or not the recommendations, we'll share that with you. We'll tell you absolutely exactly what's going to happen. Um, first of all, I think it's, it's great news. So, so congratulations. I think it's a really good feeling in the room. I think people are really happy with the appointment. So, so it's good news. And also the, the approach that sort of Pete outlined before the appointment process and sort of afterwards in terms of visibility and communication so it's it's um, good as we move forward i guess so, so two questions that are somewhat related the first is as you've sat on both a sort of local regional and now national fence um your view on how we can support you and support the national sort of uh, awareness and, and recognition of the ymca so what can we do uh, to support you as you sit there? that's the first part but related to that one of the things that Pete mentioned was about sort of media profile and presence being known. So therefore, what's the expectation of how we now ramp up building on your BBC breakfast? Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so where, where do we go from here in that one? Um, if I start with the media one, um, I think the media has been I mean, it was a great opportunity, and I felt that was a God-given opportunity. That the day after we told you we'd been appointed, you sure it's on the more breakfast TV the next morning, or if you were driving on Radio Five Live, or wherever you heard the interviews. So, and I think that told me something um, that it is something that we should be doing. We should be really focusing on. I think once you see the, what we're getting out of the brand, our key messages. Once we get our key messages right, we can. Mm -hmm. full on um, in relation to the media. But I don't always expect it to be me. And this is where you can support me, in that I have so many experts around the room that will probably be better sometimes meeting key individuals or sitting on BBC 
see breakfast sofas. <laughs> I don't think I'm the answer to everything. Um, and so it would be that people would engage in that with me. So if there are requests for you to get involved, or if you think that you've got particular expertise that would be helpful to us, um, then you let us know that. Yeah, we have got a lot more traction with the BBC and others uh, in recent times than I've been anticipating over the next uh, few weeks to get to have more I'm saying, people appearing in, the, in, the, in that sort of media. Um, I bumped into the producer of the question time the other day, who I know a little from the past, and um, just threw out that we would be more than happy to sit on question time. And he said, you know, I never thought of what I was saying, but I'd be, love to have someone there. So I think we're getting that traction. And as yet, yeah, many of you said, because I've been around and said it, I believe we need, you know, we punch well below our weight yeah. in terms of a uh, uh, movement, and we need to be doing those sort of things. And yeah, I, I wish, you know, in years' time we can jump over us by that. It's important to us, not because we just want to brag about what we do, but actually it's a way of getting, getting more influence with policy makers and with the public and fundraising. And, with those you know, trusts and all sorts of things. But, uh, sorry. No, what was great was we, I know it was only one, but after the BBC appearance, we were sent a donation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just, that, you know, we're being told something here, so I think we need more to listen to that. So, yes, I am going to be trolling the movement for <laughs> appointments of people in relation to media to join me as so we are a group and when things come, the most appropriate people step forward for that. Equally, other support will be, I have a real vision for our chief executives in the movement to be engaged in YMCA England. Um, I'm hoping that when we review things like how we engage with you, that that, that might come a different way. So it's chief executives from the movement being the people that come in to us rather than us putting people out to you sometimes. So, you know, <coughs> some common opportunities might come up. Please, please consider them. We've got some fantastic um, local um, people working in YMCA England at the moment and they do something special. <coughs> so it's, yeah, it's that. And please be a bit patient. If we do make a mistake, it's not. Know, if it's incompetence, then that's a bit different. But what I suppose what I'm saying is we are going to strive really hard to do the right thing. We're going to be moving at a pace to try and do that. And so occasionally, something might pop out. Hopefully it won't be too big. But if we forget to call you back, you know, please just let us know you forgot to call me back. But I don't think um, there'll be any intentions of us not giving you any people in a great service. Uh, just a question on governance. Um, I'm just wondering what the uh, what perhaps the two or three big issues that the board will be facing in terms of governance uh, over the coming year. And I think also uh, it's been interesting for me just the last 24 hours to, to speak to one or two people that clearly got some kind of issues around the way governance is working in their YMCA. And I, I think for me it just underlines the real need that we've got if we're going to have outstanding YMCA and the government, both nationally and the local. Yeah, I, um, in terms of governance around the movement, um, the nominations committee is at Andrew's, and the chairs, which is actually the committee of the movement, not a committee of what I'm saying the board, had already begun to discuss widening their sort of remit to sort of recruit trustees and uh, to, to the boards. Uh, and I think we have got to have a real, we, we, one, we need to, to help recruit the right people to all of our uh, YMCA's. We also need to get the training right of both trustees and chairs. And I think the thing I have learned very quickly in dealing with some pretty messy situations in the last six months is most of them that result from bad governments. Mm -hmm. as, and we need to do that. And yeah, I, something, something struck me in, uh, yesterday when Steve Chalk was speaking that we, between us, need a, approximately a thousand trustees to run the YMCA movement. Now, is, you know, is, that, is that 
<laughs> right? Um, I, uh, you know, that's quite a task to get a thousand people with the right calibre of what we want. Uh, I haven't got any answers, but I'm personally passionate that you know, we need to up the governance standard across the movement. And I certainly play a part in, in that. Um, sometimes as well as too complex. So we recently mapped <coughs> groups that sit around the governance structure for I was saying that. And I called it that one. And I was shocked when it filled an A4 sheet. And was really even more shocked in the column that said where the, what the reporting was, where there's some of them said no one. Um, so what I think happens is we set sometimes set some but with the you know, task groups even they they get drawn into the governance they don't stop they carry on and then we forget we've got them so I think Peter is also committed with the national board to be look to look at um, those groups that we've got around and we will realign that to support a much more focused strategic plan so that it's simple that you know what everybody does, um, and so you can just get on and do it. And moves quicker. Moves quicker, yeah, just much more flexible. But, you know, at the moment I think we've got about 20 people. Sorry. Um, I'm not sure if this is good news or resulting, but uh, it's great to have a uh, high level financial expert who's operating uh, on, on, on the board. You alluded early on to uh, pension. Uh, and some thoughts around that. And then we talked about uh, what may or may not happen in terms of housing. Uh, we've always been, in recent years, uh, um, constrained by the fact that we have this huge uh, pension deficit. And I, I don't even share any more of your ideas on that, but it's a subject for many of us find confusing and uh, is a bit of a, a problem in terms of being able to develop. Okay, let me um, I'll try. And the, we haven't got an answer. I mean, I, I, there's no way near an answer, so I haven't got um, One of the constraints that I always heard was you know, we had to keep a housing portfolio in my FCA in order to support the pension deficit. Well, actually, we certainly can't give it away. The help is that, that will not support the pension deficit, but as long as we were to get the value that's on our balance sheet, um, I'm pretty poor that I am, but I was pretty certain that that would be fine. So, you know, as long as we get the right value for what our asset is. You know, a very tentative thought, the big problem for us is, is uncertainty of the pension deficit. It goes up and down. Um, you know, we, have, we had an interim valuation done a year or so ago, which shot the deficit more through the roof and nearly fell off our chairs. We're hoping that when we get to the year, beginning of the next year to do the, the triennial valuation, it will come down a bit. But we, but that's really unsettling for us all that we've got these ups and downs. So I guess my thoughts around, you know, find the right moment when we know what the number is, think about borrowing against the movement assets to pay, to pay it off. And have to end up with a loan, a loan with a certain repayment that we know what it is, and it's not going to go up and down, <coughs> and, and we've frozen the deficit once and for all. I don't know. I, you know. We need to work through some of those, whether that works or not, whether it's affordable, whether we've got the assets to borrow against that. But it may be, you know, we may be a sensible thing for us to, as a movement thing. There may be other solutions, I would welcome thoughts, but yeah. I, yeah, I just feel it's going to hold us back. And yeah, I think we've hopefully heard from Denise and I that we're keen to move forward. Yeah. I, mean, I, I wonder what, if everyone would want to just feel has got one more rosy and then shall we? Just back to a couple of things around governance and relationships, really. And you know, as you have said, Denise, relationships aren't necessarily working with your member organisation. You are a member-led organisation of one chamber itself, and I think that's an emphasis needed. But also the governance function of the BDE 
is leaving, as I understand, and so how you will focus back on the governance thing you just said yourself, Peter. So I think there's two very significant challenges there that are very timely yeah. that can be dealt with for the future, and I think I would ask that they would be addressed for us as, as members uh, for the future. So the, what, what we're doing with you well, just, just uh, for those who haven't brought up, um, I think it's now. I hope there's, there's a couple of others. <laughs> 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 Jim Rapp. Oh, yeah, it's, it's Jim is sat in the back. Jim sadly is leaving us um, uh, in, uh, shortly to pursue a different role, which I believe is a teaching role. And um, it will be sad to see Jim go, but. Um, I think I'm really quite excited. I haven't got to know Jim quite well in the last uh, few months since he's chauffeured me around and <laughs> found the places to visit. But actually, I think you know, uh, Jim will make great teacher, <coughs> and I think that's a, a very brave and kind of thing to do. And I certainly, Jim, on behalf of all the movement, wish you well. We will probably celebrate your departure, but that is a good opportunity. So, Jim is going, so that's what that, if you weren't aware of that. There. So uh, that's the easy bit. You can. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but Jim is leaving, which I think with any job, when someone leaves it, it's an opportunity to say, is it working? Well, we know it isn't because he told us that. <laughs> so, um, in relation to trying to have a dual role, you know, there is the relationship element but also the governance element. So, we are looking at, because once we have a movement strategy, there will be a need to look at how we do this. We thought that it's an opportunity to just hold um, at the moment and put some interim things in place. So we are going to meet with Danny, for instance, uh, who is the chair of the Jewish Ex Network for um, Midlands. And so we, have a, we have a meeting arranged for the 1st of July when Jason Stacey and I are going to go up and have conversations with Danny around um, what, what the meeting is for. Um, no. Just to respond to that, I think we, we need to develop, and you can feel it in the through when it's good, a covenantal type relationship with each other, not a contractual relationship. Yeah. I mean, we need to get away from this relationship between why I'm seeing with the rest of us that's around contract and legal and what you're going to do, and get back to a relational set of uh, values and behaviour, because it's actually described as a biblical covenant. There's a responsibility both ways, isn't there? Yeah. There's a round of relationships, and that's what I want to put on the table from the Midlands point of view, because I think we can offer some of that. And I think the fact that we have this opportunity to perhaps pilot something with the Midlands when they move really the support in the question And we have heard loud and clear, certainly from one visits and others, you know, the communication, the communication, the relationship thing that we've tried to set up with the BDEs is not working as well as it could. It's probably an impossible job to ask them to, mm. to do. We need to rethink how that works and this is part, uh, part, of, part of that. And, um, and the, just so you know, for the governance aspect, which is 60% uh, of the job, because they are two different jobs. So we are going to be, we are going to be talking with Chris and Maxine, who we might hear a bit more about the leadership development strategy. You know, we need to invest in developing our chairs and trustees. But it is developing, it is leadership development. Um, and equally around supporting the networks um, and what we can do to support the network. So we might be delivering that governance support differently. Yeah. But there are conversations we're having. I'm stepping in, she's going I'm stepping in. <laughs> Just to say, well, I hope you feel as excited and enthusiastic um, about hearing that as I do. I think it's a new chapter, it's a catalyst, it's a transformational, to use Denise's word, moment for us as a movement. And I'm feeling very enthusiastic and optimistic about the future, uh, and I hope you are too. 